Okie dokie. So, this is my design for Antenna Tracker. Um, it's all in 3D at the moment. Um, I'm just finalising a few bits and pieces, but this is the general, the general design. We've got two Yagis, uh, about 15 decibel gain each. Um, <clears throat> and these are going to be um, oriented at 90 degrees from each other. So they're sort of going to be, these two Yagis are going to be on a diversity receiver with um, 90 degree differential in terms of the polarisation. So one will be horizontal, the other one will be uh, vertical. Um, and as well as a diversity receiver, I've also got an oracle. So the idea is that uh, in the middle there we've got a 8 decibel circular polarised uh, patch antenna. So um, for sort of close in range flying um, and circular antennas tend to be a little bit less uh, sensitive to things like flying behind trees and stuff so at low, you know, close range as I'm coming into land that should uh, the diversity oracle should actually prefer the the patch antenna a lot more but obviously at long range the two 15 decibel um, Yagis are going to be doing all the work. So just working on the tilt system at the moment really. Um, let's get in there. Um, we'll dissect this in a minute but essentially we've got a 5 to 1 gear ratio here. Uh, these are aluminium Servo City 122 spur gears um, along with a, um, a metal uh, pinion gear for the servo which is 24 tooth um, and this is the HS7950 uh, uh, titanium gear which is a pretty uh, pretty serious servo to be honest um, it's not cheap but um, it's like over 400 ounce torque um, at uh, 6 volt which is perfect um, for the sort of weight we're talking about here um, and then uh, because that's a 5 to 1 ratio um, I'm never going to get sort of 90 degrees out of that so I'm modifying that for 360 continuous the servo um, and then I've got an external feedback potentiometer here um, on the other side um, which is basically a 5k pot um, um, which is actually being geared down um, or geared up should I say. So as the main spur cog does 90 degree turn this should do about 240 or something um, which means that I'll get a much uh, much better resolution um, on the tilt because I'm spreading that same 90 degree out over a much bigger um, potentiometer change so um, uh, that's about um, that's the main design of that. <coughs> um, and then essentially the idea sort of long term is uh, perhaps, uh, depending on how these get on, uh, because obviously they, I think these are about 800 grams a piece, uh, the Yaggies, um, and obviously I can't mount them in the middle to balance it, so um, to make up for that there will be a plate across here which will actually have the main battery pack um, for all the receiver and the oracle and the antenna tracker and the servos. Uh, so the battery pack will be mounted up there, which will sort of counterbalance the weight a little bit more and still allow it to do, um, you know, your 90 degree um, tilt. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea. Now these, um, these chaps here are mounted in with, um, this is just a Velcro, a Velcro strap. So there's a bit of um, sponge foam around the Yagi um, to sort of give it a bit of grip I suppose if anything um, and then around this hex spacer there we've got uh, you know just a bit of um, velcro that's stitched here as a loop um, and then you pull it round um, round the lower um, hex spacer and then pull it back and it will stick up here the velcro um, and really the idea of that is to be able to have, I mean obviously these Jaggers are quite, you know, um, they're nearly half a metre long, yeah? So it's not like the sort of thing you're going to lob in your car. Um, so the idea is you can sort of detach the Jaggers very, very easily. Um, and, uh, you know, just literally 
strap them in with the Velcro, good to go. Um, and the actual clamps themselves, um, obviously a carbon fibre, um, and very rigid, so that's going to hold it in place uh, quite firmly. So that's the plan, and that's uh, that's my initial design for the uh, for the tilt structure. Right, so this is the. Um, I'm just going to take you through some of the um, renderings that I've done um, from earlier in today is uh, sort of breaking it down into its finer components. Um, so this is the basis of the tilt structure which is actually the, the, the servo. Um, again it's the 7950 which is uh, super duper. Um, about 400 ounce of torque and obviously bear in mind we're, we're doing a 5 to 1 gear ratio so that's quite a considerable amount of, um, of tilt ability. Um, so what we do is we mount it on the uh, carbon fibre plate here which has got the um, slots which allow you to sort of slide the main plate up and down to get perfect gear mesh um, and it also allows for slightly different gear ratios. Um, that's the plate without the servo in. Uh, that's the back where it's just literally bolted on with nuts and bolts, keep it nice and tight. This is the 5K pot, <coughs> which we mount in a similar plate, but it's just got a hole in the middle instead of a, a square. Uh, again, it's got the, uh, the slots in to be able to sort of shift it up and down to get the perfect gear mesh. Um, and there we are with it mounted in. There's the back. Um, this is the main tilt plate, um, essentially sort of vertical plate, which is a uh, four mil carbon fiber both the servo plate and the uh, potentiometer to plate are two mil, uh, but the main tilt um, uprights are sort of four mil carbon fiber, so it's gonna be really, really strong. Um, and you can see where the, uh, the plate uh, fits in there. So we're using uh, flange bearing um, with a quarter inch internal diameter, so the shaft is a quarter inch shaft going through. Um, these are pretty chunky flange bearings as well. Um, so that should be very rigid indeed. So there you go with the servo mounted in the uh, vertical plate. Um, ready to rock and roll. Here's the back. Um, and you can see there the 2 mil carbon fibre plate that the servo is attached to. Um, and the other one, uh, the pot one. <coughs> now the only difference here is that I've got some 5 mil spacers, um, mainly because of the threaded area at the, um, at the the sort of base neck of the pot, um, just to sort of stop that getting in the way of the hub. Um, and again, that's that mounted in the vertical. Um, and here we are with the main sort of vertical plates mounted with the spacers, which are um, aluminium um, spacers, basically, with three mil screws. Again, they're all titanium screws here throughout. Um, and there's the uh, stainless steel shaft, quarter inch. Um, servo goes in, pot plate goes in, and there's a close up of the, uh, the shaft sticking out there, which uh, should be pretty beefy. I think it'll be strong enough, easy. Um, and there's one of the hub adapters, which is uh, just a sort of regular servo city. I mean, the shaft and the bearings and um, the gears and things are all from Servo City. I tend to buy all my stuff there for, you know, pan and tilts for aerial photography and things. Um, and there's the aluminium spur gear, uh, which is 120 tooth, um, with the 24 tooth pinion on the servo, so that's uh, 5 to 1, uh, which is the same gear ratio and the same, in fact, um, gears you get if you buy one of their sort of pre-made 5 to 1 metal gear boxes. Um, it's the 120 and the 24, basically, in case you didn't know. Um, so yeah, probably going to go for the aluminium uh, spur, just because they look nicer. <laughs> um, I don't tend to like running metal on metal in terms of gearing, but I don't know, tempted. So um, that's the other side, um, and again we use the same 120 spur gear on that, um, just to keep it consistent and keep it looking nice and even Stevens. Um, and with the pot there, we've put a uh, just a, a screw-mounted hub on there. Uh, we don't really need the torque of a clamp mount. Um, and then obviously the gear goes on 
um, bolt it in, she's good to go. Um, so there's the uh, sort of straight view of it uh, to show it all in place. Bit of gear mesh there, and again you can adjust that as you want, sliding up and down. And there's a sort of can of Pepsi. Um, obviously it's a can of Pepsi that I made in 3D, but it does represent exactly um, the scale to give you an idea of sort of, you know, the scale of it all. Um, <coughs> now this is um, sort of, I've designed this thing in a reasonably modular way in as much as the, the side plates there are, um, are all symmetrical and they're also designed in a particular way that means that it can be adapted. So this, for example, is the layout, assuming you wanted to use. This is a diversity patch antenna. So the height of the uh, main vertical tilt plates have been designed so that it will fit perfectly a, a diversity antenna, which is quite popular. And I, um, I tend to fly with one quite a lot. Um, so it's like an alternative setup um, with that. And again, you can see the clearance on the bottom there. Um, that's assuming it's mounted directly in the middle. Um, so that's just another option for antenna mounting with this design. There's a close up there and again these, uh, these aluminium blocks there are the ones that I had manufactured ages ago that I use for all sorts of stuff. Um, but they're very very solid and I don't have to worry about weight on this particular thing. So, um, so what we do is we've got a duplicate one of those that is uh, at 180 degrees from it um, and bolted in. Uh, and again these are all 2mm carbon fibre plate. Um, now the benefit of that, um, of stacking them like that, is so that as it tilts down, um, you get the clearance on the pinion screw, and you'll see that in a minute. So these are the clamps on, uh, with the hex bases, this is where the Velcro attaches to, to strap round. Um, another one there from a different angle, um, they're all 2mm, um, and that's with both sides all done. Um, and there's the foam pad waiting for the uh, stick on the eight decibel job. And there she is. Uh, again, another can of Pepsi, just to get an idea of the scale. Slightly tilting up. Um, now this is with it pointing in the air, if you can work that out. Um, <laughs> it looks a bit confusing, but that's it pointing straight up in the air. Now here you'll see what I mean about the clearance, yeah? Um, for the pinion screw, so um, and this is why I like designing things in 3D because I can sort of test these sort of issues. So um, by stacking those um, plates forward and back, um, I've got a two mil clearance there on the pinion screw, which is ideal for the servo uh, clearance when it's at full tilt. Um, and obviously that's with the uh, with the Yagi's uh, attached. Um, and what inspired me with this is I'm <laughs> it's a little bit like those twin guns you get on the old. Um, um, warships, which I think looks, uh, when that's scanning around the sky, it should look pretty mean. Um, so I like the idea of the Aggies. And there's a close up there, the, um, the one planning to have the uh, Velcro straps um, tucking in the uh, Yaggies into the plates there. Um, again, all titanium screws there as well, and even the two mil screws further down the titanium. Um, and that's a nice sort of overall view. Horizontal, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. And that is my design. <laughs>